Spirit of Living God, that's uh, the hymn you just heard has been sung many times at Credo over the last 20 years. Often it's been sung on the first day of Credo, like today, when people are gathered together for the first time, not really knowing what to expect. We, in that song, we're praying for the Spirit of the Living God to fall fresh on us. You and I don't know what to expect from these three weeks, especially being distant from each other. But we trust and hope that our lives will be different after our time here together. Welcome to Morning Sing. Every day at Credo, we'll have a morning sing. Often they will be asynchronous, a word meaning two events not happening at the same time. By the way, there's no truth to the rumor that that word is derived from the observation of a violist left and right hands. No truth to that rumor whatsoever. <laughs> Okay, but sometimes, like today, we're going to be synchronous because it's nice to be together. So asynchronous or synchronous, we're still going to have a good time with this. So um, why are we doing this? Why should a music festival have time devoted to spiritual matters, you may ask? Um, well, about 20 years ago, I had gone to a lot of the good music festivals in the country. I'd also had the privilege of playing with people like Yo-Yo Ma and Isaac Perlman, Bobby McFerrin and Julie Andrews, a whole bunch of great musicians. And I found out that the greatest people, greatest musicians that I played with, were often always the greatest people. And what makes me strive for greatness in all areas of my life is my Christian faith. I think that a life filled with love is worth living more than one not filled with love. And that faith, good faith, always leads us to the source for love. So that's why we're doing it at, uh, at Credo. Music, faith, and fun, these things are separated in normal life of young people. Think about it. You do your music, you have fun with your friends, you may do a faith thing, they're all separated. Credo is all about bringing those things together. You're going to get fed here at music, Credo musically, but also spiritually, and I sincerely hope that you make some new friends. There'll be great food in the morning sing every day. It'll be presented from a Christian perspective, but consider like going to a vegetarian restaurant. If you go there, you may be a vegetarian, you may be something else, pescatarian, omnivore, but if you go to that restaurant, you will get nourishing food regardless. You'll probably get a lot of tasty food. You may even recognize some familiar dishes and you may find some new things that are appealing. So, if you don't like the particular course that's being offered that day, I would say stay on the video because you might find something you like, but it's a place where we can all meet. And through the years, people from a wide variety of backgrounds have been really, really nourished by uh, Morning Sing. So it's great to have you. For our first Morning Sing today, I thought it would be good to start at the 100 level of the course, uh, introduction level course. As a music teacher, I recognize the value of foundational work. The most advanced concepts and achievements all depend on the foundations being right. And I believe that the three most foundational aspects of faith, and especially Christian faith, are one, God is. God is. Number two, God loves us. Number three, we should do something in response. God is, God loves us, and we should do something in response. Number one, God is. The modern theologian John Piper says, this is the most basic fact and most ultimate fact, period. 
of all the billions of facts there are, this one is at the bottom and the top. It's the foundation of all the others and the consummation of all the others. Nothing is more basic and nothing is more ultimate than the fact that God is. How do we know this? We know it by God revealing his name to us in Exodus chapter three. Let's try an experiment. I'm going to say some people by their names and I, I'm, uh, let's see, can I go to screen view? Huh. I, can I scroll? I'm limited in my screen. Mary, can you stop sharing screen just for a minute? Thank you. Good. So now I can see some people and you may be on my screen. I'm going to pop and try and get somebody from every screen. Solomon, wave your hand. Sarah Solomon, okay. Lottie, raise your hand. Okay. Joey. Okay. Eleanor. Ellison, who's not feeling well today. Hi, Ellison. I hope you're feeling better. <laughs> Hannah, oh. Great. So when we tell people our name, it's to make ourselves known to each other. You guys were all anonymous haha, <laughs> until I said your name. And then you were identified, and then you were all somehow accessible to other people capable of being known more intimately and addressed personally. If you didn't know who Solomon was, I mean, his name was there, but when I say Solomon, it starts a conversation. So what is God's name? And Mary, we can go back to screen sharing now. <laughs> when Moses encounters God in the burning bush, God tells Moses, I am that I am. Exodus 3.14. What a weird thing to say. God's self-given name forces us to think. God loves packing mysteries inside of mysteries. I am that I am. This divine name is just as mysterious as God is a mystery. It's once a name revealed, I am, and something like the refusal of a name. Hence, it better expresses God as what he is, infinitely above everything that we can understand or say. In this name, God proclaims he is the uncreated creator. That requires a lot of faith from me. How can you have something that is created by something that wasn't there? I don't know. <laughs> God is independent of any concept, independent of any force, independent of any other entity. In other words, everything that is not God depends entirely on God. The entire universe, everything we can see and touch and experience is secondary. Mary can come back to the screen. Thanks. So if God is primary and everything else is secondary, that means as important as your social life is, as important as your chair placement in the next audition, those things are all secondary. Your bank account is secondary. Your fashion is secondary. Your number of friends on Facebook or in real life is secondary. Everything is secondary. And the question to ask is, do our lives really reflect this ordering? I am that I am means that God has no beginning, no middle, and no end. He's a Mobius band. God is a Mobius band. <laughs> As it says in Revelation 4, 8, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Mind-blowing, right? God is. Point number two. Famous, famous Christian verse coming up. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. John 3, 16. Very, very famous and foundational uh, verse. For me, this is the most mind-bending fact of all, that the all-powerful creator, powerful creator of the universe of everything, he knows all about me. As it says in Luke chapter 12, are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? Yet not one of them is forgotten by God. Indeed, the very hairs on your head are all numbered. Don't be afraid, you're worth more than many sparrows. So next time you're feeling bad about yourself, say, hey, God thinks I'm worth more than many sparrows. <laughs> 
It's amazing to me that God cares about me, a sinner specifically, but even more amazing that he sent his son to die for me and for you and you and you for all of us. The act of Jesus dying on the cross was a corporate act, but it's one we are entirely personal for each one of us. We could spend our whole lives trying to understand that fact and we'd never get our brain around it. This amazing love should bring forth gratitude from all of us. And if we were here, I'd have us sing another hymn, but it's, it's embarrassing to sing hymns when you're all alone, isn't it? So I'll just read this one. Last verse of When I Surveyed the Wondrous Cross. Were the whole realm of nature mine, the whole realm of nature mine, that were a present far too small, love so amazing, so divine, demands my soul, my life, my all. God loves you. He really, really loves, specifically, you. So, love so amazing, so divine, demands my soul, my life, my all. Part three, we should do something about it. Again, we're going back to John 3.16, God so loved the world that he gave his only son. That's what God did because he loves us. He gave up his only son. I have four sons, and the thought of intentionally harming any of them makes me shudder. Yet Christians believe that God gave his only son, his only son, for each one of us. What should we do because we love him? The first and most obvious necessary response to God's primacy and his love for us is to send, surrender to his will. Many of you might pray the Lord's Prayer and you just breeze past it. We tend to breeze past those words without thinking. Your kingdom come, your will be done as it is in heaven. We voice our desire that God's will, and not ours, be done in the world. It's a very hard thing to do, though. Sometimes we express our response to this, that we're doing God's will, in terms of being born again. Various denominations point to this event as having a specific time, place, and date, while others think this is a process that needs to happen on a daily basis, dying to ourselves to be open to living for Christ. A recent document, the Council of Trent from 1551, <laughs> see I'm old, I can talk about a 1551 thing being recent, uh, talks about a second conversion which is an uninter uninterrupted task and that each of us can at once be holy and always in need of purification. So what does this mean when it comes down to you know, how we're going to put it into practice? There are many small ways to be responsive to God's call in our lives to do something about the fact that God is, that he loves us. How does God want me or you to respond? That's the third part of the credo mission. Develop the gift, acknowledge the source, respond in service. Well, you know better than I do what those ways would be in your life. Let me give you some examples that come to mind. One, go out of your way to do something nice for someone. Forgive someone. Befriend an outcast or somebody that's different than you. Study the score of your next chamber music piece. Don't look down on others. Practice your double stops. Stand up for the truth. Don't gossip. Or become an active member of your faith community. But the biggest thing, of course, those will be all outcomes if we commit ourselves to the work of God every day. God is calling people, his people, to do great things, things that can't be done on our own, but they can be done with his help and encouragement and the support group he has given us. Who is God calling today? Who here in the Credo family will be energized by God calling them today or over the next three weeks? Here's one of the favorite all-time hymns at Credo in answer to that question. The question raised in Isaiah 6, 8. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, who am I, uh, whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, here I am, send me. So we often pray during our morning sings. And um, before I end this with a vocal prayer, um, I'm going to say, just to make sure that we all understand the delivery system, 
This is synchronous. It's fantastic to see all of you here. And welcome, welcome, welcome. Several days a week, we're going to be doing this asynchronously. So you can start your day with it. People in the East Coast, it's already lunchtime. <laughs> you know, we want to go have lunch and relax and get ready for our afternoon lessons. So most of the days it's going to be recorded, but a couple times a week, we're going to do this synchronously so we can all be together. Now, as I said, it may be embarrassing for you to sing if you're the only one in your room. So if you feel like singing, sing. If you don't feel like singing, just let the music wash over you, okay? But do look at the words because they go beautifully with the melody. The words by themselves are okay. The melody is okay. Together, they're very powerful. Okay, so he who sings once prays twice. So I'll let this closing video be our prayer today. And uh, when the video is finished, we'll be finished. Have a wonderful day at Credo. And I look forward to being together with you again as soon as we can. That's one o'clock for the viola students. <laughs> Great day, everybody.